Well, good morning. Mike Doe at Melco, part of the applications team, and uh, hope you like my digs here. This is a home office, uh, Doe home office, made into an embroidery shop. Um, wanted to introduce my good buddies, also part of the applications team, uh, Nate Moore. Hey, all. And, uh, and then also Mr. Scott Stingle. So let me switch Hello, screens everyone. here. And uh, Nate, if you would say hi one more time. I forgot to switch the I forgot to switch the screen, so my bad. <laughs> so um and I keep wanting to click on the wrong screen here. I apologize. A little amateur uh uh video streaming going on this morning, so apologize for that. So today we want to talk to you about um some shortcuts on the keypad on the machine. Um it's amazing. I don't know how many times I've walked into shops and I'll see someone doing these these weird interactions with Melka OS and the keypad, and it, it turns out that uh, they didn't know that they could do it all from the keypad. So today, I want to share all these secrets with you, um, and I got my uh, a team of compadres here to help me with that. So the first thing I want to share with you, um, I am going to change scenes here. Hold on one sec. Um, I want to show you um, something really good. So big shout out to uh, Dan and the Melco Service Group, the technical support team, I think is what we're technical support or technical service. Sorry, Dan, I messed it up again. But they've got this great website, melco-service.com. And you can go there and do searches. So let me back up and show you where that is. So melco-service.com. Click on the FA, there's some really good information. We're gonna click on this first link here and we'll go into keypad functions. And um, I, I know I'm really small up in the top corner, but you'll see that I actually printed off um, this, this picture that uh, Dan and his team has on the FAQ for the keypad. And the reason I did that is I, when I first got my first Amaya machine um, back in 2002, I actually took this keypad and I taped it up next to the machine so that I had the ability to remember all the different key functions. Um, I think it's a great idea. There's this little sliding thing on the keypad. Some of us use it, some of us don't. It's almost too small for my eyes anymore, so I don't use it. I use a, a big tape version of it, getting, uh, getting bad eyesight. I eat carrots all the time, so I don't know what's up with that. Freaking Bugs Bunny lied to me, I think is what's happening. So, um, anyways, keypad, tape it up there. The nice thing about the one that, that Dan and his team did, and I'm not sure they did this on purpose, but Dan, I'm going to give you credit. I think he did it on purpose. They left all this area over here blank for me to write down the keypad uh, functions that I can't remember. So use this, print this out. Um, we'll take and uh, actually take this link and, and put it in the comment section um, in fact, speaking of the comment section, I really would love to get some comments from you guys. We're streaming both live on YouTube and Facebook today. So uh, thank you for being here, whatever side of the, the, the universe you're on, Facebook or YouTube. Um, hopefully that opens it up to um, our friend, friends outside the country that can't get into Facebook. Hopefully you can get into this live stream of YouTube. But um, give us some comments on you know, questions on what can I do with the keypad? Can I do this? Can I do that? We'll try to answer those. But as well, I would love to hear, hey, Mike, do you know that you can do this on the keypad? Because by no means um, does this team know everything. Um, we, we know a lot. And the reason we know a lot is because we're always learning. So we'd love to learn something new from you guys today. Hopefully you learn something new from us too, right? That's the idea. So um, getting into this, uh, once you, once you have this picture printed, you can click on this link and it's going to take you into a place in this wonderful, wonderful operator's manual. I don't know who wrote this thing, but this is just like a, a work of art. Um, actually, I know exactly who wrote it. Nate, Nate has uh, taken over our manuals for how long has it been now that you've been doing our manuals, Nate? I don't even remember. <laughs> Well, I, I can tell you that um, ever since he took over, not that the person did it before wasn't good, but 
having a user like Nate, a super user like Nate, um, write the manuals that just read so much more like us as users would want it to read. So thank you, Nate, for doing that. But um, hey, hang, yeah, hang tight for half a second. Um, and keyboards, the keypads that we're dealing with, um, a lot of the functionality. We've got a comment. I have a Bravo. Is it a little different? Uh, the the keypads, the functionality, a lot of it's going to be um, the same. It'll be any of those changes that that you may see, and I'm I'm struggling to come up with any right now. But um, it it would be I think software dependent. Am I wrong? Yeah, either software dependent or um, it would be. Uh, we need to understand that uh, EMT sixteen pluses, um, Bravo twos, Bernina E sixteens and EMT 16 X's um, will have a little bit more uh, additional functionality in the keypad. Um, but what uh, Nate has done a good job of is he did not document those um, difference in, in the keypad um, functions based off the board um, in there. So yeah, for the Bravo users and the Bernina users, everything that we're gonna go over today, it'll apply to whatever machine you have. Um, if there is a difference in something that we're showing you, we'll make sure to call that out, um, but you will not see it on this document. So that'll be, that'll be like the undocumented secrets, um, and we'll make sure that we tell you which ones those are that will work for the Bravo 2, the E16, the EMT16+, Plus, and the uh, EMT16X. Does that sound good, uh, Nate? Yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. Great questions. Keep them coming in. Um, keep them coming in. So let's get back to seeing here. Okay, so one of them that um, I don't see on this list um, for one touch controls that I think is is really valuable for people. Um, and I believe this is our first one. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nate or Scott, but I believe this is the first one that would be something that is dependent on the board on your machine. So this would be an EMT16+, Plus, a Bravo 2, or an E16. And if you're, if you're not sure, if you turn, if you engage your E-stop and your LED lights down on the, uh, the needle plate stay on, then you know you've got one of these machines that I'm talking about. So the function is, is just pushing, and I'm gonna move over to the machine for a minute, is just pushing the down arrow on the machine, and if you push and hold it, you'll see that the hoop moved out. Now, it might have been hard to see on my screen, but the hoop actually moves out into an applique pause by just pushing and holding the down arrow. If I do it the other way, then it'll pull it back in. So it's a hold for about three seconds, I believe, so you push and hold, single button only, and that'll put it into an applique pause. I love that feature. Um, you can do that in the middle of a design. Uh, you can do it you know, at the beginning or the end of the design. Um, and, and so that allows you to get in there without having to stick your fingers when the machine's not running, right? We don't put our fingers in there while it's running. But when, when it isn't running, it's really hard to get in here, and that's that's one of the things about this is, is to guard from us getting our hands down in there. Especially it'll pull right back to the same XY position that it was at before. Cool? Um, another one that we're gonna jump into, so um, write that one down. So that is not on your, on your list of stuff. Um, so write that one down. If you push and hold the down arrow, that'll put the machine into an applique pause. So you've gotta push and hold for about three seconds, don't let go until the machine starts to move. Um, and I believe that one is strictly a a Bravo 2 E16, EMT16 Plus, and EMT16X function, okay? Um, I'm almost certain of that one. Uh, one other one, and let's switch back over to this scene here. Um, these are really good key combinations, and what I would do is I would look at it um, as a user and which ones am I doing the most? Like a lot of people know about the trace. This is one that we all get taught um, and trained on really, really well. 
But one that we don't get taught and trained on really, really well is just below the, uh, the trace design. So how many times have we gotten to a point, and let me switch back over to a combo screen here. So I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm gonna start it. Now I'm gonna stop it and let's say for some reason I needed to move the design or something happened that makes me want to do something. Um, let me change my screen here. And we get this pop-up over on the OS that tells us that a trim is required. And so we think we have to walk over and say yes to this. Well, no you don't. You can push these two buttons, the adjust button and the frame button. And if you push those together, now watch that screen. Um, it will get rid of that uh, trim immediate. So this is a trim immediate bypass of these two buttons here, these two keypad functions. So that is, and let's go back to that screen here for a second. Um, that is a really awesome tool. So I would mark the bypass trim required. Um, my goal, I don't know, um, you know, I, we all have our, our specialties in the applications team and mine is not as cool as Nate's. Nate is like Superman when it comes to lettering, when it comes to designing. Um, he is just like the font wizard, man. I mean, this guy knows more about fonts than I do know about life. So this guy is all over it. And, and Scott is just, I swear, I, I've been around the world many times, literally I have, and I have not met a better digitizer or better person than Scott. It's a great guy. He's got his specialties. My specialty is the machine and making sure that in, in production, our folks get the most use out of this thing. How how can we get it to where they are getting the most use out of it? And one of the things is, no matter how big or small your shop is, the less you can be at the computer, the better it's going to be. So we don't want you going back and forth to the computer all the time. We want you, the more the needle goes up and down, the, the better off life's going to be for you. So. One of those things is that trim uh, trim bypass. I, I love that feature. Um, let's go back here. Um, Scott, Nate, do you guys have a, a favorite feature in the keypad functions? My favorite uh, lately is uh, to move by uh, jumps. <clears throat> uh, Got to yep. think of which keys it is. Move by jumps, that's the uh, star and the up arrow, right? Exactly, yeah. When you want to move a, a trim at a time, that, that has been fantastic for me. So that one, um, just so that we're clear on that, that's a great one, Scott. Thanks for sharing. Um, that is one of those that is machine specific. So your Bravo 2, your E16, your EMT16 Plus, or the EMT16X has that ability. So let's... Um, Let's share that uh, with everybody in the world. And so I'm gonna go over to our software again. Let me do the right combo. Here we go. So over at the machine, if we take, and we're in the middle of the design, I've got um, thread in the cloth, so I need to do a trim immediate. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that thread. Once we're there, what we can do is we can push the star button in and then push the up arrow and that will take and move by trim, okay? One that is not machine specific, everybody gets, is the needle and the up arrow is moved by color. So needles and up arrow will move you by color. Now what's cool is either one of these, if you wanna go backwards in the design, and let's let this catch up, if we wanna go backwards, we can hit the needles, and if we wanna go back a color, we can push the down arrow or the minus button and it'll take us back one color in the design. So this one, once again, I believe everybody gets. Correct me if you guys think I'm wrong, Nate or Scott. Um, and then the one that is machine specific, once again, Bravo 2, uh, uh, E16 Plus and X machines is the by trim, which is the star and the plus arrow will get you to be able to walk by trim through a design. That is an awesome one, Scott. Thanks for sharing, bud. All right, Nate, you're on board. What's your favorite feature? 
Keep uh, keyboard. Bypass drum is my favorite. I, I I usually yell while I'm doing it. I know better than you, and then I just start sewing again. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Um, one other one that I would like to point out to people, and so let me get back to this, and let's change this back over to the document. Um, there is one in here on how to return to last stitch or return to position. So these two right here, um, I can't highlight them, but the return to uh, last stitch, there we go, now I got it. Um, this will, if you take and move the hoop in the middle of the design, this will allow you, no matter what type of machine you have, if you push these two arrows, um, the machine will move exactly back to the last position that it knows where, um, you know, the, the next stitch would be laid for the machine. So if you move the hoop for some reason and you need to get back to it, push the left arrow and the right arrow together and that'll get you back to that position. Now, if you move to a new spot, um, let's say for some reason you're sewing a pocket or something above a pocket and the first stitch you look and you go, you know what, that's a little too high. You could do a trim immediate. You could take and move to the new position that you want. And if you push the up arrow and the uh, down arrow at the same time, it will block that new XY position that you've got. So those are two that I use quite a bit um, is that either retain XY or return to last stitch. Okay, so those two are really good ones. Um, do we have any comments at this point? Nothing? Um, the bypass trim will save a bunch of steps. So, you know, if you're trying to up your steps with your pedometer and compete with some people, maybe you don't want to use that command, but you know. Um, and then questions about, will these work on a red and white? And I said, you know what? I, I still have one of those, it's right over there. <laughs> um, and, uh, I use the majority of them. Um, it's just some of the, the newer ones that are the, and I lost the serial number and the machines, but the, the plus and the X and the Bravo two or three, whichever it is. Yeah. And uh, yep. I use I use almost all of them, not infrequently. Not infrequently. You know, another one that is um, uh, pretty cool, I, I actually didn't see it on this list. So this one is um, going to be kind of one that uh, will just, um, let me get over to the um, machine, um, is the laser and the up arrow. How many of us use the laser and the up arrow? So if you've got an operator or you are the operator, and you forget to put down pinch rollers, what the laser and the up arrow will do is it will actually feed thread for the active needle. So it might be hard to see, but you'll hear it. I'll be quiet. So you can see that it's actually feeding thread out. So instead of lifting that pinch roller um, to thread the needle on the active needle, you can push the up, I'm sorry, the laser and the up arrow, or the laser and the plus arrow, um, to to feed that thread, so that's a that's a cool one. I don't think I saw that on that list, um, but it's a it's a neat one to know about, um, especially if you forget to put the pinch rollers down because that's a that can be a, a, a hairy mess if you forget that. So, so one question we just got was, well, the the moving the frame forward. I, I think I'm off on my timing a little bit, but will moving the frame forward allow for easier access? Um, if you run out of bobbin on a cat. And I think the answer is, man, I wish it did, but the, the driver is still going to be in the way you got to take the cap off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, more times than not, it's, it's really hard because that cylinder, you know, if you've got at the cap frame that you're using is the, uh, uh, one of the conventional ones from hoop tech, really good cap frames, but if you're using one of those, you might be able to sneak your hand in there to do that. But with the wide angle cap frames, it's pretty hard with those posts to get in. It's usually easier to take the cap frame off, put a new uh, bobbin in. Um, and if you're doing a, quite a few of the same hats, you know, you, you'll start to get a rhythm where you might every four hats, you've got less than a, you know, a full hat worth of bobbin left. You can start changing it out when you change that fifth hat in and out. Um, uh, once again, a, a nice way to be efficient. You may, you may um, lose a little bit on the bobbin, 
but overall time and cost, it'd be cheaper to do it that way. Good question. Good question. Any on the Facebook side, Scott? Uh, I think we're good so far. Okay. I just wanted to mention uh, in class, we tried to teach avoiding the applique pause for hats because it pushes the bill so close to the back of the needle case. Um, a hold is better in your designs for stopping to add puff and stuff like that. So it, it can be very hard to get the hat off if you've got the yeah you know, hat that, all the way forward too. That actually applies to a couple things, right? I mean, that's a great point, Scott. The, I don't like to use applique paws with the... Um, uh, with the Melco fast clamp either. Um, uh, depending on versions of software, it actually the, the fast clamp or um, especially the, the hoop tech um, slim line, never use an applique pause with that because that can actually hit the back of your needle case. And, and, and I don't know, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm the only one in the world that's ever done it, but I don't think I am. You know, I've torn a needle case off um, actually doing that and in a regular hoop one time i was trying to adjust the um the uh, um, presser foot and the the hoop did an applique pause and pinched my hand between the uh the bucket the xy pantograph um and it pushed so hard that it actually pushed the needle case off um luckily my friend mark davis was there to put it back on but and it didn't hurt my hand but it sure was embarrassing in front of the customer to have that happen so once again, safety things like that, please, 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 if you need to adjust the presser foot or you've got something down in the material, just stop the machine. Um, you know, it's it's gonna be a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot uh, less painful for you than, than having your hand pinched or a needle going through your finger. So, other questions, That's Scott? That's embarrassing because you, you won't have to admit it on, on, you know, live stream later. Yeah, that's a good point. You'll be like me, you know, I'm Mike Doe. Uh, I am. I'm a bad person by messing with the presser foot while it's running, um, kind of like a presser foot anonymous class or something. So, Scott, any other questions? Nope, we're good for now. Okay, awesome. So, what we'll do, guys, is um, there's a lot of different keypad functionalities in here. Um, I would love you to continue comments like uh, I saw Rachel the other day um, on the For Love of Melco. She's got a huge screen up on her wall and she uses a wireless mouse so that she can be any place in her um, operation, uh, you know, at any one of the machines and she can control her software without having to walk back over to the computer, which in the long run, when you've got even just one machine, when you don't have to walk back and forth to the computer or walk away from the machine, um, it's gonna be great. So uh, take Rachel's concept and, you know, big screen TVs have come way down in price. Look at hanging a TV, especially if you've got a couple heads or if you've got something else going on. Let's say you've got embroidery on one side and you're running banners on the other side, which are huge right now. Um, you know, have a big screen up so that you can actually see what's going on in the machine instead of having to walk over and look at a little 14 inch monitor right so we will post these up there continue to give us comments um i just want to make a shout out real quick um next wednesday we are going to be talking about um doing micro chenille um and uh so we'll be talking about using bermalana and bermco and uh, firefighter thread um so look for that facebook live next wednesday we'd love to have you all tune in for this uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live. I have to get used to saying both now. Um, so uh, I appreciate you all being here. Um, from Scott, Nate, and I, and especially Melko, thank you for being a customer of ours. Bye-bye.